Hello again friends, hope you've been keeping well and are ready for our next discussion here on the Supreme Court Historian YouTube channel. Today's uh, discussion is about an administrative law case, Commissioner of Police Bombay versus Gurdhan Das Bhanji. This was decided upon by the Supreme Court on the 23rd of November 1951 and this deals with the very important administrative law concept of discretion. Administrative discretion is defined in several ways. I've included three of the uh, well-known points. The power, right or liberty to decide one way or the other. The person has the power or the right or the freedom to decide in one direction or the other than he is said to have, then he is said to be vested with, said to possess that particular discretion. The power to act according to one's own judgment. For something to be done within discretion, it is to be done according to reason and justice, not private opinion, not arbitrary, vague and fanciful, but legal and regular. I have relied heavily on Justice C.K. Thakkar's book on administrative law in India for this particular slide. So administrative discretion is, I hope, clear as a concept when the uh, right or the authority to take a particular decision or to take a particular course of action is vested in a person who holds a particular authority. In this case, it happens to be the Commissioner of Police of Greater Bombay. Uh, the facts are as follows. In April 1946, this gentleman, Mr. Gordhandas Bhanji, applied to the Commissioner of Police of Bombay for permission to build a cinema hall in Andheri. Nice quaint words for that nice suburb of uh, Bombay. And there he had been added to Greater Bombay only in October 1945. So there was plenty of scope for improvement and development and new cinema halls, movie theatres, what as we call them today. And Mr. Gordandas Bhanji wished to build one of his own. And for that, he sought the permission of the police commissioner, as was the law at that time. Interestingly, on the 14th of July, the commissioner of police did grant permission based on the advice that he received from the Cinema Advisory Committee constituted by the government of Bombay. The name itself is Cinema Advisory Committee. So they could only suggest a course of action to the commissioner and he decided to grant the required permission. Interestingly, two months later, he wrote back once again to Gordhan Das Bhanji saying, I am directed by the government to inform you that the permission is hereby cancelled. Gordhan Das Bhanji applied for permission to build a cinema hall. He was granted the permission. Then that permission was cancelled. So the next course of action, as you can imagine, taken by Gordhan Das Bhanji was employ some lawyers. They wrote to the commissioner reminding him that the authority to grant permission is vested in him. How can the government interfere? Now, there is a lot of to and fro of letters here, but I assure you that it is very relevant. In fact, it is crucial to the outcome of this case. In response to uh, Bhanji's lawyers, this commissioner wrote back saying the permission granted was cancelled under the orders of the government who may be approached. He's trying to wash his hands off the whole matter. It appears to be that case. I personally believe that there is something more uh, intricate uh, happening over here. Anyway, the, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the petitioner, the person asking for that license, Mr. Bhanji, he was left with no alternative but to approach the courts of law. He petitioned the Bombay High Court for a writ of mandamus. Uh, the mandamus writ, let us remind ourselves, can be granted when you want the court, the higher judiciary, the high court or the supreme court to order a government servant or a government authority or a public office to perform its duties, to perform its statutory or constitutional duties. If they are not doing so, then you can seek this particular writ. You can petition the court for this particular writ, the writ of mandamus. The Bombay High Court did actually go ahead and grant uh, 
that particular rate issued mandamus against the commissioner ordering him to withdraw the cancellation passed by him. It was the commissioner's turn now to approach the court in appeal to the Supreme Court which uh, constituted this three-member bench led by Justice Vivian Bose who wrote the judgment along with brother judges who approved Justice Fazal Ali and Justice M.C. Mahajan. So uh, before we go on to what was argued before the court and uh, what was held by it, let us take a look at the relevant provision of law which comes under the City of Bombay Police Act 1902 which delegates the authority to uh, make certain rules regarding licensing etc. We have studied delegated legislation already so let's not lose any more time in that. One of the rules under uh, this act, rule 248, stated that the commissioner has absolute discretion in refusing any license etc if such place appears to him likely to cause obstruction, inconvenience, annoyance, risk, danger or damage to residents or passers-by. So basically the commissioner was well within his rights to refuse any license. Further, Rule 250 goes on to even say that the commissioner shall have the power in his absolute discretion at any time to cancel or suspend any license granted under these rules. Not only can the commissioner refuse to grant license based on Rule 248, but Rule 250 says that he can even cancel a, a permission that has already been granted. So on the face of it, <clears throat> under the letter of the law, it appears that the commissioner was well within his rights, doesn't it? He had granted the permission and he was well within his rights to withdraw the permission. But the crucial term over here is, <clears throat> is discretion. The commissioner has absolute discretion to refuse any license. The commissioner shall have the power in his absolute discretion at any time to cancel or suspend but there has to be some discretion exercised by the commissioner but it appeared in this case that that was not the case which is why we have included those uh, letters or the content from those letters. Did the commissioner really exercise his discretion? The first letter <coughs> where he cancelled where he communicated that the uh, license is cancelled, he said that I am directed by the government to inform you that the permission is hereby cancelled. And when the lawyers wrote to him, he replied back once again reiterating that the permission granted was cancelled under the orders of the government who may be approached. So it is quite clear that discretion was not really exercised. The commissioner is merely conveying the orders of somebody else. The government of Bombay did not have that authority to grant or cancel that particular license or to add or to uh, order the commissioner to grant or cancel that particular license. The government could have of course advised him to do so which they did under that cinema advisory committee. So there was uh, no, no basis for the government to actually carry out these cancellations. It was entirely within the purview of the Commissioner of Police and that is what the Supreme Court held. But we have to read these words because they are so relevant and so very important. That is why I have included them over here. We have held that the Commissioner did not in fact exercise his discretion in this case and did not cancel the license he granted. He merely forwarded to the respondent an order of cancellation which another authority had purported to pass. He was bound to exercise discretion vested in him and bring to bear on the matter his own independent and unfettered judgment and decide for himself whether to cancel the license or to reject the objections. That duty he can now be ordered to perform. The Supreme Court has said that it does not matter whether he has uh, granted that license, whether he has refused that license. What is relevant here is has he exercised his 
discretion has he exercised his judgment his own independent and unfettered judgment judgment that is not restricted or restrained by some other authority which have which it appears was the case over here and the court has actually uh, used the word post office in the judgment just as vivian bose has written that the commissioner has merely acted as a post office forwarding the order of the bombay state government and not his order not the commissioner's order which he was bound to do further more interestingly the supreme court did not actually upheld did not actually uphold what the bombay high court had stated the bombay high court had granted the writ of mandamus and ordered the commissioner to withdraw the cancellation the supreme court did not do so the supreme court said that you can cancel it you can grant it we want you to exercise your discretion and go ahead and do that so the writ for mandamus was uh, was modified by the supreme court instead of granting the permission the supreme court ordered the commissioner to exercise his juristic his discretion basically telling him that when you have the discretion to do something it is your duty to exercise that discretion it is not an option uh, that you possess whether or not you should exercise your discretion that is not the situation at all when the discretion is vested in you you are bound to uh, exercise it that was the commissioner of police bombay versus gordandas bhanji a very intricate point of law uh, being explained by the supreme court very important case and uh, which has been cited in over 400 other reported judgments of the uh, supreme court and various high courts and those are of course just 400 odd reported uh, judgments of the higher judiciary so a very very important case and interestingly a very simple and straightforward one as well so hope this has been informative hope you will join me once again for our next discussion bye bye